<laughs> so we've talked a little bit about um, uh, worker cooperatives and we've talked a little bit about land trusts and I wanted to give a brief example of how they've been um, combined in a really inspiring way. Um, so we can bring these, we can bring the slides up. I'm not going to rely on too much, but I wanted to ask you guys, how many of you are familiar with the um, reclaiming factory movement in Argentina that's happening? If you, <laughs> a little bit, um, so maybe um, close to half or a little under. Um, if you haven't gotten a chance, you should watch the documentary Take. Um, it's incredible. And what it is is this inspiring story. If you don't know what happened in Argentina, just a very brief history, is um, after following uh, the Washington Doctrine of horrible neoliberal policies for um, a while, Argentina's economy completely collapsed in 2001. Um, Forty billion dollars were whisked out of the country of, of elite money were whisked out of the country, whereas um, people's bank accounts were frozen. Um, local people's bank accounts were frozen, and um, because of the exodus of money, many of the factories were just shut down. So, um, as some people who realized that you know, many people were out of job, millions millions of people were just completely out of work. And unlike um, some economic situations, these were people that were often, um, they were middle class um, and they had good jobs beforehand. This was a, this was a change from, um, you know, not poverty to deeper poverty, but people who were used to having a lot in their life and going into, into poverty and not being able to feed their children anymore. Um, so some of these factory workers were like, why are these factories closed when we know how to produce what's being produced? in these factories. And um, you can see some pictures um, in that first one. It says, um, Bananas del Pueblo, it's of the people, and uh, Apoyo a los Obreros, support the workers. And so that first company was a, um, Zanon was a, um, it's a tile ceramic company, and they took back their, their, um, factory and started producing and started, you know, being able to pay themselves some money. Um, obviously, when you take back something, <laughs> that you're going to meet resistance. They've met with um, six evictions, um, six eviction attempts by the government um, by um, acting on behalf of elites who want their property back. However, they have built and part of their power is incredible community support for what they're doing. If you listen to the people in the video talking about the support, it's like, well, these people are just trying to have jobs. They're not trying to do anything that I disagree. They're trying to keep their jobs and have their work. And, and you know, they give tiles back to the hospitals, back to the community centers. And have, through their um, work with the community, been able to to bring them out when it's time of eviction. So you have huge crowds in front of these in front of these buildings being like, no, you're not going to take this back and close it. There's, you know, you're not going to take this back and then close the factory down. So they've inspired um, hundreds, thousands of workers at hundreds of companies to do the same. So there's a movement in Argentina to reclaim factories, to start up the work again, and there's some legal support for it. So this combination of like you know this land that's that's um, um, by record by a state record is owned by elites is being reclaimed by the people and to some extent through government supported mechanisms through some extent it started not it started as a movement that was completely outside of the scope of what was legal. And now, through recognition through the government and, you know, a more left-leaning government than the one that went out, or the, the five that happened in five weeks um, as well, but a little bit of support from the left-leaning government, some of this, not all of it, um, is supported. So now you have people who are, who are, act, or who are now fighting to, to say, okay, no, I want complete legal rec recognition that this is our factory, you know? It's it's an incredible it's an incredible movement. It's it's touching, and you can see. Um, and it's not easy, you know. A lot of these re um, reclamations or expropriations, they're calling them, um, take a while. And in the meantime, people don't have money. People don't have food, you know, to feed their children. There's a really hard, you know, uh, gripping story where these 
you know, the mom's like, I can pay my bills or I can feed my daughters, so some of the bills don't get paid, but if we lose our house, then how am I supposed to, like, you know, the, the cycle of poverty that's, that while they're waiting for the ability to reclaim a factory, you know, so it's not easy, but it's hopeful, you know, in, in, in situations where entire um, economies collapse, that little bit of hope is a really incredible thing. So, how do we translate what's happening there um, you know, thir the factories, there's some, some statistics there with 13 to 134 workers per factory, Fif 10 to 15,000 workers um, that wouldn't have had jobs, you know, and I got to say, that's bigger than the whole U.S. worker, um, worker co-op economy. Um, so that happened in a matter of a few years. One that's a little sad for those of us who are worker cooperative <laughs> advocates in the U.S., but but you know, that's an incredible accomplishment for there. So yeah, why don't we go to the next slide. So I want to say, talk about what this means for what we're doing in the U.S. and what can happen in the U.S. What we're doing at the Democracy at Work Institute is convening um, people like Sarah here and, and others who are working in the worker co-op um, um, space and we'll be working with um, the Southern Grassroots Economies Project and the Southern Economies Loan Fund and the working world which is the finance institution that financed a lot of those factories in Argentina. Um, groups like that, as well as groups that are in the employee ownership space and, um, you know, co-op um, uh, university centers for cooperation, to figure out how we take advantage of the fact that Billions of dollars in wealth are going to be, or a trillion, I think it's a trillion dollars of wealth, are going to be transferred from one generation of owners, mostly white um, owners, elite owners, that may not have anybody to sell their business to and get those businesses in the hands of their workers. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple examples of... Yeah, I think it's on. So it's I think it's one trillion dollars in wealth are going to be transferred in the next uh, between now and uh, um, 2025. I think in business ownership because the the baby boomer retirement uh, this they call it the silver tsunami has um, kind of pushed back because of the uh, economic um, uh, the Great Recession in 2008. A lot of people stayed working at their companies. They kept owning them and didn't want to sell them for nothing. So now they're um, thinking about, okay, it's a buyer's market right now for companies. You know, there's a lot of, of companies that just sit in broker markets, like who's going to own this when we could own them, you know? The workers can run these businesses. Are there some capacity gaps in the meantime? Yes, but we can figure out. So what this group is trying to do is how do we figure out how to get these um, get these businesses in the hands of owners, of the workers, have the workers be the ones who are owning these businesses, and um, in long term take them out of a capitalist system and create a new cooperative system. And I think that um, this is one of the biggest opportunities that we see right now for, for making this possible because it leverages the existing, you know, bad buyer's market for businesses and, um, and turns it into you know, something that no longer needs to be speculative, that's, you know, a worker cooperative owned and controlled by the workers. So um, a couple of, yeah, if you move on, a couple of examples. One, um, saving rural jobs. There's a, in Deer Island, Maine, there's a, um, there's a, a, three businesses, I think one's a gas station, a, um, a, a grocery store, and like a general store, right? And I don't know if you know about rural areas very well, but often, you know, the grocery store and the hardware store are the only jobs. Um, so a guy wanted to sell. He owned all three of these businesses. He wanted to sell. The only people who wanted to buy wanted to lowball and take all the jobs away, just take his inventory and close up shop because they don't care about that community. So um, he, they were already a cooperative because Ace Hardware is a cooperative, right? It's a purchasing cooperative. So he had heard of the idea of a, a purchasing cooperative. So he's like, um, he went to his cooperative network and said, what about this idea of worker cooperative? And so over the last two years, and it, you know, it happened maybe this spring or early or last fall, um, the workers bought out this business with the help of cooperative banks um, lending um, to them. And they saved all 60 jobs. And it's not easy, just like anything, it's not easy to, to go from in your entire life, um, 
being told what to do and how to do it to becoming a cooperator, becoming someone who believes in their own ability to run a business and to find clients and to do all the things that you need to do to run a business, but um, they're on their way and they are uh, they broke even this year, so they're um, which means those jobs are sustainable. So they're you know those jobs are saved, which is you know for now, which is I mean a great accomplishment. And then um, I wanted to talk about build with prospect because there's I think this is, there's this incredible opportunity here of of transfer. You don't need the the leaving owner to to care about worker cooperatives. You don't need them to care about their workers all that much, really. You just need them to not really have another buyer and want to sell something, you know. So um, there's that that's not the case in this one, but in in in. But in this case, with Build With Prospect, the selling owner um, is converting to a worker cooperative, which means now it is majority minority owned. Um, a majority of the business is now controlled by people of color, which is, you know, what we can do with this work is like business by business empower and, and create worker owners from people who were just labor before, who were just rented out for their time and given a little bit of money for it. We can transfer them into owners of their business that make decisions about their business and own the assets of their business. So I think it's a, um, I think it's a powerful concept. I think there's a lot of hurdles and, and our, our work as a collaborative is to, to identify those. And um, I think one of the biggest ones is how do we fund with capitalist money a transfer away from capitalism. <laughs> so wish us luck. <laughs> but uh, that's what we're working on. Thank you. All right, so give the panelists a round of applause. So, unfortunately, kind of had to go to work. <laughs> um, but I can fill some of the questions um, that were for her. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to break off into small groups, right? And in your groups, you're going to discuss what you want to ask the panel. <laughs> right? So I guess you can kind of split off maybe four groups. You know, we actually like only have three minutes. Oh, we only have three minutes? What is this one? Yeah, I do. Yeah, we do. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. T take it to 10.30. That's yeah, let's just